So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, in the name of Allah, the most compassionate and the most merciful, this is like, we as Muslims, when we start uh, saying something, we usually say this. In, in Arabic, it's Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, this is the translation, in the name of Allah, like in the name of God, the most compassionate and the most merciful. Uh, the topic today is going to be uh, ten, oh, top 10 misconceptions about the queens of Islam. And this is like uh, what I chose for my topic. Uh, <clears throat> I started by writing top 10 uh, misconceptions about women and I said, I said okay, Women are the queens of Islam, so let me say the queens uh, of Islam. Uh, it helps a little bit uh, predict what will come in a minute. Uh, why women? Well, there are a lot of misconceptions about Islam, about Quran, about uh, Sharia law, uh, about the Prophet, peace be upon him, about uh, Jihad, and many other beliefs. So it is not only women. Uh, so why women? Well, actually, the reason why I chose women is because a lot of people are interested uh, more to know about women in Islam. And because everyone, almost everyone everywhere, sees a good number of Muslim women uh, in his or her life. Like, wherever you go, America, Africa, Europe, China, wherever you go, you find uh, Muslim women. Uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, first of all, the first thing I would like to start with, and this is going to pave the way for me and for you guys, is to differentiate between religion and culture. Sometimes you see something that is cultural, it's not religious, and you think, oh, look, like, this is like, look at what Muslims are doing. Well, this is not Muslim thing, it's kind of cultural thing. Uh, here are a few examples like food traditions. If you see some people are eating something or not eating something, this is not necessarily from Islam. It's basically uh, like something cultural, not, not Muslim. Uh, burqa, and burqa is a kind of hijab, and uh, I'll show you some pictures for the burqa, burqa um, here. Women's work also talk about this. Now, women's education, beliefs about others. And virginity, and I'm not going to talk about virginity in detail, so let me very quickly uh, say something about virginity. Well, in Egypt, uh, you know Egypt, right? It's a famous country. <laughs> well, in Egypt, in, uh, in the upper part of Egypt, we call it Said, uh, they care uh, more about the virginity of a girl when she gets married. And what I'm going to say now is unbelievable. You guys might not believe it, but it is there. They watch, like, they wait for the girl when she gets married to check and test her virginity. If she passes the test, then she's fine. If not, they do what? They kill her. What? Kill her for what? Because she's not virgin. And this is something that is not from Islam, is not from Quran. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said absolutely nothing about that. And in, in more than one case, it was found out that she was virgin, but she had a kind of medical uh, deformity or something like, but, but she was fine, and she was killed, she was innocent. So, when you hear something, and they say, this is Islam, please make sure, is this Islam, or this is like mere traditions, or like culture of a certain area of a Muslim country. Uh, misconception number one is, some people believe that women are not equal to men in, in Islam. According to the Quran, if you read the Quran, or if you read what the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, you will find that, the Quran addresses both men and women the same, equally. There is no difference before God. There is no difference in Islam between a man and a woman, except for the things that we will be talking about now. 
Now, Allah says in the Quran, believing men and the believing women are helpers of each other. They are equal to each other. And Allah also says, and for them, women, for women, are rights similar to the rights against them according to what is equitable. <clears throat> Misconception number two is women don't have the right to choose their spouses, and that's why people say that women are not equal to men in Islam. Well, they have the right, while they have the right to choose their own spouses, but the only difference is there should be, uh, like, their father or uncle or grandfather who should kind of approve this marriage, who should kind of give his permission, okay? But it's absolutely to the girl to decide whom she wants to marry. Uh, and what if, for example, she loves someone and that one is like a perfect husband? And the father says, no, I'm not going to let you marry that man because simply I don't like him or he's poor or something. She can, co she can go to the judge and say, I want to marry this man, and my father says no. And then it's up to the judge, not even to the father. Uh, <clears throat> and the, for earning and property, it's all for women. A lot in the Quran says, and what the women earn is for them. And, like, they have no financial responsibilities. Men, I mean, the husband is responsible to provide food, clothing, transportation, housing, health care, and uh, entertainment. What if the men and the women, like the husband and the wife, both are working and both earn money, take their salaries, monthly salaries? It is the responsibility of the man in Islam to pay the rent, to pay for the gas, to pay for the food. And the woman, I mean the wife, can keep the money for herself. But she, is, of course, can pay whatever she wants. But according to Islam, Islam says it is the job of the man to pay that, not the woman. The woman can simply say, I don't want to pay anything. My money is only for myself. I can spend it on my clothing, on my trips, whatever. It's up to her, completely up to her. But the man cannot say, well, I don't want to pay the rent. Well, I'm not going to provide you with your clothing. He cannot say that. And if he said, the woman has the right to sue him. Misconception uh, number three, women cannot seek separation. Once she gets married, she cannot seek separation. And only the man can do that. Well, this is a misconception because the religion says they can. Again, this is cultural thing. Cannot seek separation. It's cultural. It's not religious. Because in religion, in Islam, a woman can seek separation. She simply can go anywhere. I mean, I'm sorry. Can go to the judge court and say, well, I don't like him. Um, I just uh, want to get divorced. Uh, number four, or misconception number four, is no right to inherit. Uh, well, let me tell you that if the father dies, okay, and he has one boy and two girls, well, according to the Quran, according to the Islam religion, a boy takes twice as much as the girl. Like, for example, if the girl takes let's say a hundred dollar, a boy takes two hundred. You might ask why? Or some people might say, well, why they're not equal to men? And if you remember misconception number one, that people say like women are not equal to men in Islam. Well, simply because I already answered this question when I said women don't have financial responsibilities, but men do. When the women a girl, for example, when she takes the 100, she's not going to spend it on any kind of responsibility. She can keep it. But the man, the boy, when he takes 200, he has to spend at least half of it, like 100 for the rent and the other stuff. So they are technically equal, or even the girl uh, will, will have more eventually. 
Number five, uh, no right for education. This is again cultural. Yeah, in, in some cultural places, uh, in, in like in Egypt, the country where I come from, yeah, there are a lot of families, a lot of people who say, no, we're not going to send our girls to school. When you ask them why, they say, well, because they should help their moms or they should get ready to uh, get married or some other reasons. But this is absolutely not from Islam. On, on the other hand, like Islam uh, recommends family to send their children, boys and girls, to schools and have some kind of education. The, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, "Those are the best. Uh, those who are the best among you, or the, those the best among you, are uh, who are the best to their wives. I mean, like the best person is the one who is best to his wife." And the Prophet said, "I am the best to my wife, or to my wives." Uh, and this is one of the standards how you judge a, a Muslim person: how good or how bad he is to his family, to the female members of his family, especially his wife, and of course, mom. Ah, polygamy. Now, let's move to this kind of controversial issue, which is the polygamy. Uh, look at this. Polygamy is a limitation. It's not a license. It is not a license for us as Muslims to get married to more than one woman. But it's a limitation. You might say, what? What limitation are you talking about? Well, if we, let's get back a little bit in history. Back in days, people, I mean, the Arabs, used to get married to 10 women, 20 women. If you read books of history, you can find out that some of them were married to, like, probably 100 women or so. So the Quran came with a limitation. Don't go beyond four. It's only four. It's not a license. It is a limitation. And then it says, well, if you want to have more than one wife, there should be kind of requirements. It's not like uh, completely open to anyone who can do it anytime. No, there are, of course, some uh, requirements. Like he should spend the same money here and there, the same amount of uh, time, the same everything. If you buy your first wife something, you must buy the same thing to the second wife. If you spend a day with the first wife, you should, not you should, you must, spend another day with the second wife, and so on and so forth. Which is so hard, actually, to do. People cannot easily do that. And that's why only about 1% of Muslims practice polygamy. All my friends, all my relatives, except for one, and all the people I know in Egypt who are married have only one wife, including myself as an example. So it is, again, a limitation. It is not a license. Number seven, girls cannot get married. Well, girls can get married as young as only a few years. And this is a huge misconception and it is an old tribal tradition thing. It is not. It is not Islam. In Islam, well, actually, it's according to the puberty. If she reaches the age of puberty and she is able to take her own decisions, regardless of the age, then she can get married. And in history, if you read history, people. In all days, Muslims, Christians, Jewish, all kind of people used to get married to young girls. It was not a Islamic thing. It was kind of cultural thing. And according to the geography, like African girls usually reach the age of puberty before the Russian girls. Well, because the weather in Russia is cold, right? And this causes what? Your teacher geography, you can tell us about this. Right? So this, this like causes uh, kind of like the puberty to, to be late. They, they reach it at the age probably of 16, 17, sometimes more. In Africa, 
girls reach the age of puberty around nine, probably less. One day I was reading uh, this article and it says that, I mean, the, the writer was a physician and he said that he, have, uh, he has seen uh, girls who reach the age of puberty at seven and one girl he saw, she reached the age of puberty at six. Okay, so again, it depends on, on the country. And now, the, 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 the Muslim ulama, and the word ulama means like those who have the religious uh, knowledge in Islam, they said that there should be an age. So in Egypt, for example, it's 18. Like no one can get married to a girl who's under 18. Uh, in Libya, and Libya is an African country, it's to the west of Egypt, their age is 21. You know, in America it's only 16 in some states, and it depends on the state. And Libya and Egypt are Muslim countries. In Tunisia, Tunisia Morocco, I think it's all, also 20 or 21. Uh, in Saudi Arabia, they don't have uh, this kind of uh, regulation. It's up to the judge, like, if the judge says that, yes, she can get married, and she's completely satisfied, she says, yes, I want, then she can do it. Number eight, women cannot have leadership possessions. Well, this is also one of the misconceptions, because they actually can, and at the time of the, the Prophet, peace be upon him, the Prophet's wife, Aisha, may you Allah know, be pleased with her. She was in a kind of leadership position after the Prophet died. And his daughter, Fatima, may you know, Allah be pleased with her also. She was in a kind of leadership position. But not like with a title. It was like people used to ask them if they had kind of religious question or, or something like that. Uh, it, it is probably only the leadership of the whole nation. Uh, in Islam, a lot of a lot of uh, ulama, like the relig religious people, say a woman cannot be the president of the country. Uh, last year, I was taking a class at Missouri State University, and uh, the the class was uh, literature, and we were talking about presidency in the United States, and this girl. She stood up and she said, well, America is not really for a female president or a woman president. People would not accept a woman president in America. It was her. It was not me who said that. Uh, it's the same. And the reasons why, there are some kind of religious reasons in Islam because women in Islam, they, you know, like during the, their period, they don't practice the, uh, the worship. They are allowed and permitted not to practice it. Uh, you know, also in Islam, women should not shake hands with men, and women and men should not shake hands with men. If they do, then they should uh, repent, easily repent by saying, I ask Allah, I ask them for forgiveness. And the leader, usually needs to shake hands to be involved with all the time uh, in, in leadership activities. Uh, misconception number nine, women have no right to work. And again, this is a cultural thing. It's not, it's not religious thing. She can work. She can uh, have any type of job she likes. The last one we have today is the hijab, well, the hijab gives kind of protocol of honor, distinction of security to women like that, or a robe of a physician, or a liar, or a judge. You know, they're wearing kind of robes. It's the same for Muslim women, and they like it. You know, like when you ask them, they say, well, it's kind of my identity. I love to, uh, to wear it. Now, let's look at some types of uh, hijab. This is the wedding hijab. More wedding hijab. Kind of fashionable. 
daily use hijab is like normal everyday modern hijab. Although some people are against the modern hijab like this one. Well, Sidal, Abaya, they are almost the same. It's kind of covering like the whole body except the face and hands. Uh, people who, I mean girls or women who are wearing abaya or isdal, they usually don't wear pants. I mean, like, of course, like, but I mean, not pants and kind of shirt because it covers everything. Uh, niqab, a niqab is, is not a must, although some people say it is a must, but actually it is not. So a woman can wear it or can leave it, it's up to her. And burqa, burqa is a kind of niqab, but it's more kind of in, in like in some areas, like this is in Pakistan or maybe Afghanistan, I guess, it's, it's not Arab. Iranian and, and Pakistan. Let me say something about the Purkan and the Niqab. I have my friend, he's from Saudi Arabia, and he told me something that I found hard to believe at the beginning, but yes, I believe him. He said what? He said, like, my friend was, at the time, when he told me this, he was 32 years old. That means his father has been married for at least 33 years, right? And he said that his father never, ever saw the face of his wife, I mean, my friend's mother. I said, what? Like, come on, this is like his wife, right? It's not someone else, so how come they close, like, a door and have this kind of relation to have children without seeing the face? He said, yes. And this is not from Islam, if you hear that, this is never from Islam. It's something, uh, culture belongs to the culture of that area of Saudi Arabia. Not all Saudis do that, because I lived in Saudi Arabia for like 10 years, and I know a lot of Saudi people, and I know that they don't practice this, except for some areas. Uh, Bedouin, if you heard this word before. So, again, it's, it's not not Islamic thing, it's kind of cultural thing. Remember the first thing I say, make a difference, differentiate between what is Islamic and what is uh, cultural. Some more styles. Uh, do you know this one? No one knows this. She's a famous American person, but I don't know her name actually. Yeah. This, this is, and now I would love to uh, listen to your questions, if you have ones. I think I have a, a simple, just a, a daily interaction with Muslim people. Sure. What would be a proper greeting um, between a male and a female colleague or something? Uh, I think you said that handshake. I'm not sure if you said that handshakes are never uh, okay between the opposite sexes, or is it a cultural thing, or what would be a proper greeting? Okay, uh, yes, I said that uh, handshaking is actually uh, prohibited in Islam okay. between opposite sexes, okay. although some people do it, a lot of people actually, but simply like in, in Islam, if, if someone, if a Muslim commits a sin, he or she simply can say, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah means I ask Allah for forgiveness. That's it. Uh, so, like, the normal greeting would be in English, like, hi, how are you, without shaking hands. Between Muslims, we say, Assalamu alaikum, and Assalamu alaikum is, peace be upon you. Peace be upon you, yeah, that's it. But, yeah, like, I know it's embarrassing sometimes. Like, I, I myself actually was in more than one situation. I had to shake hands with, with women. Yeah. Yeah, because if someone, like, if you're meeting a woman and she doesn't know about this, then she makes like this. <laughs> you cannot turn her down. Like, okay, hi, how are you? I remember, 
this story, I heard it from a sheikh. Do you know the word sheikh? Well, sheikh in Arabic means like scholar or like um, religious man. Uh, he was in America and uh, he was visiting a church. And this woman met him and she was about to shake hands and he said, well, I'm sorry, I cannot shake hands. Okay? So she very quickly and unexpectedly hugged him. And after like five minutes, another woman came, and he was so embarrassed. And another woman came, and she was about to shake hands. And the first woman said, no, 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 he doesn't shake hands, he only hugs. Uh, you can hug him, but you cannot shake hands with him. Yeah, I was understanding. I have kind of maybe a hard question. Sure. Well, that's kind of a medical question. Like, yeah, I've seen cases like that. They can go to the hospital and the doctor can decide if they are like males or females and they can have kind of surgeries or operation, medical operation to uh, kind of amend or fix this problem. But I thought like if you're asking about homosexuality, it's a different thing. No, not homosexuality, but it's like, for example, someone is born with both male and female body parts. That happens a lot. How they, how like what part of society they fit in? Um, does the doctor choose? Like how do yes. they decide? Well, the doctor chooses actually, of course. Uh, but like, I don't know. I haven't seen like a case like this in my eyes. I've watched it on TV. Some cases like that, and been to the doctor, and uh, the problem was solved. But if they don't go to a doctor, it's probably up to them. Like, how do they feel? Are they like? more men than women, or more women than men, so they can act according to their, like, inner feelings. Nicholas, would you like to ask a question? Think of one. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Is eye contact, like, allowable? Like, between? Between a man and a woman. Yeah. Well, uh, do you do a greeting that's just like, hi, raise your hand, eye contact? Yes. Totally okay. Yeah, that's that's totally okay. Yeah, uh, although like not to stare like mm -hmm. this. Um, not to be creepy. Yeah, not to be creepy. Yeah, that's kind of like respecting the. Yeah, it's again a cultural thing. Uh, I remember the first time when I came to America, I was told not to have eye contact for three seconds, like three seconds, and then walk away, and then come back for three more seconds, and, and so on and so forth. I don't know if this is true or not, but well, this is really this is what I, what I, what I was told. And also, uh, where where to stand? So if you're speaking to someone, like here here in China, for example, if you're speaking to someone, they stand very close to you. In America, you should keep like this space or something. Yeah. Here they freak you out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like any more questions? Go on and conclude. Yeah, this is all we have for today. Uh, thank you so much for attending. And don't forget the role of them. Like, only understand the difference between what is Islamic and what is cultural. And one more thing, uh, read from us, not about us. And this applies anywhere. Read from people, not about them. Uh, thank you, and uh, assalamu alaikum.